What's up? This is Nate from Next Gen Diesel, and today we're going to talk about the valve body for your 47 or 48 RE transmission and what you can do to make it run a hell of a lot better. So first things first, we're going to take a 48 RE valve body that we pulled out of a 2006 5.9 liter Cummins, and we're going to take this 47 RE valve body that we built in-house, and we're going to take a look at some modifications we can do to these valve bodies to make them run a whole lot better. So first, let's break down what happened with our 2006 48 RE valve body. So as you can see, it's disassembled here, and we have the channel plate, the accumulator block, a couple of goodies like that. Let's, let's first things first, let's analyze why this customer was having a problem. So the complaint from the customer was, I can't access fourth gear. In fourth gear, I'm burning out. My transmission fluid temperatures are rising. My truck seems to want to stick in third gear. Well, what's going on? So we took the valve body out and we disassembled it and we found something really clear right off the bat that seems to be a common issue in this style of valve body. So right here, I have the overdrive accumulator piston and this is the overdrive accumulator spring. You'll also see this labeled as the three to four accumulator piston and spring in some technical manuals. So we see that the spring is broken. Well, why is this an issue? So the overdrive accumulator piston is directly responsible for making sure that fluid reaches the overdrive clutch pack the way it has to and in the proper amount of pressure when three to four is commanded. So when we enter overdrive, if we have a broken spring, we'll immediately see a very poor amount of transmission fluid pressure known as line pressure. Line pressure is the amount of pressure that the transmission closes the clutch packs inside the drums together and basically equates to clamping force. So if we have poor line pressure, that means we have poor clamping force. If we have poor clamping force, that means that we're going to slip out in the respective gear. In this case, overdrive. Fourth gear in the 47 and 48 is one of the easiest gears to fail the transmission in because overdrive gears tend to take an unusual beating due to the increased engine load necessary to get power through the unit due to the longer gear ratios. So this is a critical component that we cannot afford failure with. And again, what we found is that it just simply broke. So this is the obvious failure. Our accumulator piston spring is broken, but we actually found something else. And this is a really common issue, and we're going to walk you through it right now. So this is an upper component of the valve body. Some refer to this as the channel plate. So the accumulator piston for three to four sits right in here. And it has two Teflon seals, which if you can look closely, are seen on the side of the accumulator piston. So this accumulator piston is supposed to hold upwards of 300 pounds of pressure when applied. Granted, that's more line pressure than you should be running in this transmission under any circumstances, but it is supposed to hold up to that number. So theoretically, this should be like a piston entering the bore of a cylinder inside an engine. It should have an extremely high quality, well lubricated seal when it enters the valve body. So again, this is supposed to hold about 300 pounds of pressure. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see how difficult it is to put this in there and if we don't get a good idea, we're, we'll probably pressure test it. So check this out. That's it. That's how much seal the overdrive accumulator piston had in this 2006 truck, basically none. So as a result, that means that all of the transmission fluid that was pressed against this overdrive accumulator piston was not going to our overdrive clutch pack. So if our overdrive clutch pack is supposed to be holding at about 135 pounds per square inch of line pressure, that's not holding 135 pounds. So where is it going? It's getting reverted. It's going anywhere but where it has to go. So this is a pretty common failure in the 47 and 48 RE. Granted, we have solutions for it, but just know if overdrive has failed you, you'll probably have an issue with your overdrive accumulator piston or the spring behind it. Now further, we have the original valve body here, as I said, that failed. So something critical is the mating surfaces between the channel plate and the valve body. So this is much like a head to block relationship in a head gasket. So for you guys that are considering studying your trucks or have had a failed head gasket before, Power Stroke, Duramax, Cummins, it's all the same. If you put a head on the block and you have warpage to the head or the block, it's not going to seal properly. And that's going to equate to premature failure of the head gasket due to the cross pollination of oil and coolant. And, you know, it's going to be a pretty textbook head, excuse me, head gasket failure. So a common issue that we also see between the channel plate and the valve body 
is cross leakage internally between different oil channels. The relationship between the channel plate and the valve body is like that between the head and the block of your engine. So for the Cummins guys or, or Duramax or Power Stroke that have planned on studying their truck or have studded their truck, you know something critical for you to do is to mill your head flat and make sure your block is also flat to facilitate the best seal possible to prevent leakage of the head gasket. This is not much different. We have a separator plate that exists between the channel plate and the valve body and what can tend to happen is if we don't have perfect flatness on both sides, it'll leak internally. All of these different channels that we see are responsible for diverting fluid in different directions. So some of these channels will be employed for, let's say, second gear, which activates the intermediate servo, and also uh, third gear, for example, which activates the direct clutches. You know, we have various channels in here that send fluid to various places. So when we have cross leakage inside because we haven't properly you know, ensure the flatness of the channel plate and the valve body, then we might be in second gear and be using the second gear channels for the oil, but it might be leaking into third gear, which means that we're going to be applying clutches or pressing the apply piston forward, which crushes those clutches down against the reaction plate when they're not supposed to be. So something that is critical with this valve body is we need to make sure that all the fluid in the valve body is going where it needs to go when it needs to get there. This valve body has a lot of issues with this, and what we tend to find is variation by as much as 15 thousandths across the surface. If you have 15 thousandths of variation on a, on a head, something this big, you're going to have premature failure of the head gasket. If you have 15 thousandths variation on something this small, it's going to fail and leak almost immediately and equate to catastrophic failure of the transmission down the road. Next, we found yet another failure. This is the governor pressure solenoid for the 47 and 48 RE transmission. And this is the bracket that helps keep it in place. So there's one big problem here. The 47 and 48 RE are ranging pressure transmissions that rely on a governor pressure solenoid as well as transducer to uh, control what sort of line pressure numbers are necessary to hold the clutch packs together. So you can't really see it here, but we ohmed it out and we found that this governor pressure solenoid failed. There was no ohm return, it was basically an open loop, meaning that it had popped internally. So this is a common failure point once again. The symptoms that this will produce is that you'll be probably stuck in second or third gear. You'll have poor line pressure, a lot of slippage. You'll have extremely rough gear shifts. It might not want to shift gears. You might have to do some really weird shit to get it to shift gears. So again, common issue, but there's solutions for this that we have, I'm just saying this is probably the most common issue that I see in the 48RE in a non-performance application next to the overdrive accumulator piston failure. So we're gonna set that to the side. Lastly, we're gonna grab the separator plate and we're gonna take a look. So this separator plate serves the purpose of a head gasket in your block to head relationship. The separator plate sits on the valve body and is responsible for making sure that fluid can travel to the appropriate channels when necessary, but is not leaking into other channels when it shouldn't be. So we clean this up, you know, as much as we really could. And what we find and what we'll see is we have a little bit of burning or scoring marks right here where it clearly got really hot. So this indicates that transmission fluid reached what is known in the world of chemistry as the point of saturation. So to make that simpler, it got way too damn hot. Heat is the number one thing that kills transmissions in a day-to-day -day application. If you're running too hot, your transmission is gonna die. We see here extreme, extreme heat. That is what this indicates. Now you're going to have some marks from where the channels for the oil are, that's natural. What you shouldn't have is burning and scoring that cannot be scrubbed off because it got so hot. That's what we're finding. So that tells me that there was a lot of slippage and a lot of heat produced in this transmission. Well, heat in the transmission comes from two places primarily. One is your torque converter and in tandem the pressure pump. And two is the engagement and disengagement of the clutch packs when friction begins to be produced as they come together but have not completely seated against one another and engaged the clutch yet. So we have solutions for keeping it cool, but just to analyze, it got way too damn hot and that's why we're seeing these marks on the channel plate. So. What can we do to resolve this? So we've taken a look so far 
at the original valve body that failed. And we have a good idea what happened. Our overdrive accumulator piston was leaking. Our overdrive accumulator piston spring was simply broken. Our governor pressure solenoid had no ohm return, meaning there was no continuity. It was basically a burnt light bulb in an electrical sense. And then fourth, we found that the separator plate is burnt in some areas, which indicates that we had extremely hot fluid traveling through the transmission at one point or another. So what can we do to resolve this? This is one of our valve bodies. Uh, we put this together in-house. We use a lot of Suncoast components for our valve body. Uh, we deal for Suncoast, TCS, Raybestos, all those good dudes. And uh, there's a lot of components that fail in the stock unit that we just simply do not reuse. So first thing is first, we're going to analyze all of the failures that we saw in the old valve body and what we do to correct these. So your governor pressure solenoid, it ohmed out, or excuse me, it did not ohm out. It was an open loop. It was blown. Solution. This is the General Motors version of the governor pressure solenoid and transducer system. So what makes this so much different? Well, firstly, we have a real nice high quality billet machine plate. Really cool, you know, really not so susceptible to leaking. It's aluminized, it doesn't flex. We're not gonna have a whole lot of leakage there. But the big money maker is the governor pressure solenoid itself. That is this big round component here. I'm gonna hold it next to the factory one. Do you see a size difference? These accumulators, or excuse me, the governor pressure solenoid in the GM unit is substantially higher quality, and uh, this is actually something you would find in the Allison, and I hate to say this, but the Allison is just a hair better made than the 47 and 48 RE. But when it comes to going fast, the 48 RE is very liberal about getting power through the unit, which makes it very beneficial for the performance applications. And uh, we build Allisons too, but on the topic of the 48 RE, this governor pressure solenoid is a big upgrade for us. Now, there are some applications and there are some builders who prefer keeping the original governor pressure solenoid in the unit. That's totally subjective. Some guys have claimed that they see a line pressure drop at the very top end. We have tested it and we found excellent success and this is what we believe in. So that's upgrade number one. And this is how we prevent having a future issue with your governor pressure solenoid and transducer system. Well, second, we take a new channel plate or excuse me, we take a new separator plate, excuse me. So this new separator plate is laser cut, it's precision cut down to tolerances within one thousandths of an inch. And the benefit to this is that it is perfectly 100% flat. So, so is the other unit, but it's made out of a more malleable material. So if we remember physics class, metals have a metric of malleability. How does this relate to valve bodies? If you have a malleable material, then you're going to have an ability to flex and crush, and that will contribute to premature leakage inside the valve body. As for us, we use a less malleable material that is precision cut. Again, it's laser cut. Our tolerances are as tight as possible. And the benefit to this is that we're not gonna worry about crush, cross leakage. We're gonna have the best seal possible internally to this valve body. Nothing is gonna beat this seal. That's a big benefit for us, and that's gonna help keep your keep your truck on the road longer. So this is how we resolve the issue with governor pressure and how we also resolve the issue with cross leakage internally. So what do we do for your accumulator piston? Well, the accumulator piston is already installed in this valve body, but to give you a better idea, we use a higher quality seal that protrudes further. And by protruding further and having a tighter grasp on the bore of the accumulator piston, the accumulator piston's bore, it gives us a greater ability to withhold any line pressure that is commanded. So in some units, we upgrade to billet accumulator pistons. In the 47 and 48 RE, we do not, and that's for a very specific reason. So the billet will wear the bore very quickly. In the 47 and 48 RE, the issue is not so much that these pistons crack and break and shatter. I've seen that in the 68 RFE. That doesn't happen in the 47 and 48. I've almost never heard of it. So the plastic is okay because the plastic will not wear the bore of your accumulator piston housing at all. It is very safe because it's softer than the metal used to create that. Hence, we're not gonna wear your bore out with this. What we are gonna do is introduce better seals that prevent that sort of cross leakage and reversion when we don't want it. Because of course, the last thing we want is fluid to go anywhere but where it's commanded to go. So that's our resolution for the accumulator piston. As for our spring, 
Now, because of the small nature of some of these components, we're going to keep them in the original baggie. However, we take a higher quality spring that has a higher seat pressure to sit behind the accumulator piston. And the end result is that we have an accumulator piston that has a tremendous amount of back pressure holding it in place right where it belongs and delegating fluid to the appropriate channels when they need to get there. So that gives us a much better feel for the three to four upshift. So to improve shift feel across the board, a common complaint that some guys give us on the 47 and 48 RE valve body is I don't like the way it shifts. It feels uncontrolled. It feels like I'm kind of getting a rev flare. So really simple explanation. If you're getting a rev flare, meaning your revs are going up as you're getting into a gear and then drop back down once that gear synchronizes, this generally indicates that your valve body is not producing very good pressure or that your clutches are very worn out. And the end result is they're not clamping well. Well, clamping force is the biggest priority for us in our 47 and 48 RE valve body. So the end result is that we take the regulator, which can be found right here, and that regulator gets adjusted to where we still have ranging pressure, but that minimum ranging pressure is going to be about 110 pounds and maximum commanded will be right around 200. So we have seen some aftermarket companies that put the valve body's pressure at somewhere close to 300 pounds in some applications. I've seen 275 is the highest somebody's set it. Well, that doesn't make any sense and let me tell you why. So more line pressure does not necessarily mean that it's better, you know? And the reason behind that is if we have too much line pressure, well, eventually things are gonna have to start breaking apart. There's so much that this valve body can take before we leak. It's kind of like boost or drive pressure. There comes a point where you just have too much. Unpopular answer, but it's true. There comes a point where you have too much. Um, but inside this valve body, what we have found is that shaft snappage will occur before clutch pack failure does if we run it at about 170 pounds unlocked and 200 pounds locked and nothing more. So the ranging pressure is beneficial to us. For you guys who like running a constant pressure style valve body, that's an option. We do it. I have one in our competition truck that's right behind us. So totally doable. If you want to set your line pressure to say 220 and run it that way and you have a heavy truck and you want to make sure those clutches aren't slipping, not an issue. But ranging pressure is generally the best for a day-to-day -day application. Now, for the guys who are interested in high performance, um, automatic valve body is an option, of course, that's how most of them will come. But for the guys who are interested in a full manual valve body setup, we do take the 47 RE valve body and that will mate directly into your 48 RE. And the benefit of that is that in the 47 RE, the intermediate servo, second gear as a whole, is not solenoid controlled, it is a manual valve. And the benefit of this is that we can make a manual valve body out of the 47 much more easily. So if you're looking for a manual setup, we got you. If you're looking for an automatic setup, we have you. If you're looking for ranging pressure, constant pressure, whatever the desired configuration is, we, we have it here. But to go on about the modifications that we've done to make this valve body more reliable, we have attacked cross leakage with our separator plate. We have attacked the governor pressure issue with our governor pressure solenoid conversion from Suncoast. And now we take, we take the valve body itself and we, we make some internal modifications. So we drilled two holes into one of the channels in the interest of facilitating less counter pressure when the converter lockup clutch is attempting to be engaged. So what does this do? When your torque converter is attempting to lock up, there's counter pressure that makes it lock up slowly but smoothly and firmly. We drill two holes to allow better reversion, which in sense means that the torque converter will grab the face of the, or excuse me, the torque converter lockup clutch assembly will grab the face of the converter much more easily. And the benefit to this is that you're gonna get a real firm, crisp lockup feel. Really nice for the guys who like to tow, extremely nice for the performance crowd. And there's not one person on the road who would not benefit from that in their Cummins. So if you have a 47 or 48 and you're concerned about your lockup feel, we can definitely make resolution for that. In addition, we take some of the original springs inside and they're gone. We remove them completely in place of springs that have a higher seat pressure. So let's say I'm building the top end of my engine. Say I have a 6.7 Cummins. If I want to better control my valve train 
then something I need to make sure the valves do is close more quickly when they when the push rod enters the heel of the cam and now the rocker is trying to lift up. I don't want those valves to be hanging open longer than they have to. I want them to be perfectly in time with the lift and duration of the camshaft. And that's why we put 103 or 110 pound valve springs in the head of our Cummins or different seat pressure in your Duramax, whatever have you. Well, we have found a similar benefit to adding higher seat pressure springs inside the valve body. So the benefit to this is that the valves, when the solenoids are engaged or disengaged or in a manual valve body setup, it's a little less applicable. But the goal is for valves to move as quickly as possible inside the unit. And that's how we facilitate this using the heavier springs. So the benefit is the quicker the valve can relocate to its desired position, the quicker your transmission will enter the desired gear. So if you want firmer shifting, crisp shifting, and faster shifting, we have solutions for that that are built internally to the valve body. That's gonna be critical when it comes to your performance application, when it comes to you towing a heavy rig down the road with your clamping force and the better shift quality, because shifting gears is one of the easiest times to kill the transmission because if it can't grip, all hell breaks loose. We've we have some very desirable solutions for applications like that. So we're gonna take it a step further. So the 47 and 48 RE valve body, this is not an Allison, this is not a 68 RFE. There is absolutely no TCM. So I kind of make the comparison that this transmission, this valve body is kind of like a, it's kind of like a starfish. It doesn't have a brain, but it gets through life anyway. There's no TCM, but it still knows when to shift. It still somehow figures out life. So to make some improvements to this, We've taken, of course, these heavier springs, some heavier plates. We've taken a different pressure relief valve in its entirety, and we've made some adjustments, some cutting, some honing, and we have found that making some slight adjustments to the size of the pressure relief valve, the, the uh, seat pressure of some of these springs, we find that there's a tremendous impact on the right side when it comes to how your valve body pulls your load down the road or how your valve body hauls ass when the, when the Christmas tree turns green. So. If you're looking to improve the performance qualities, towing qualities, daily driving qualities, or even just the durability of your 47 or 48 RE, there is no other valve body you should be looking at than our next gen diesel valve body for the 47 and 48. We have you covered. We've attacked cross leakage completely. We've ensured faster shifting through heavier seat pressure springs, and we've ensured greater reliability through better seals for the accumulator piston, a heavier spring, and drilling some holes here and there and helping that fluid travel more liberally where it needs to go and when it needs to get there. If you have any questions, feel free to call us at this number and we'll get you figured out immediately. I'm Nate, call me anytime.